If you had a chance to trade places with someone, who might that be? I'd love to trade places with my mom when, when she was about, you know, 24, just for a day. We have no idea what it was like, and I would love to trade places with her and go back and see what it was really like in the golden age. No, I don't want to trade places with anybody. I'm, I, I'm not at like in, in, I don't envy anyone's lifestyle. I'm happy with my situation. I would like to be Prince one night. That people probably don't know who Prince is. He's a musician. I'd like to be him one night. I think all entertainers want to be like. It's everybody's like. Any entertainer wants to be a rock star, you know, because it's like I don't know. I think I'd like to do that for one night, but just one night because he's five foot two, and so <laughs> just one <laughs> one night. <laughs> if you lost everything overnight, like your character in the film. What would you do? I still have my Ontario uh, cartage license, which in, uh, uh, enables me to drive like a dump truck or a, a straight truck uh, with an 18,000 uh, pound capacity limit. Uh, so I'll always be able to drive truck. I know how to run a bulldozer. Um, you know, I can, I can, I'll always get by. See, but my character, uh, all he, he, he was brought up with money and wealth and uh, uh, the feeling that he was genetically superior and uh, socially superior, and when he loses everything, of course, uh, he has nothing to fall back on but the good graces of uh, Ophelia, the, uh, the, the hooker, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. So um, I don't have any such person. I would have to fall back on my own uh, talents as a manual laborer and blue-collar worker, I think. Either that or I'd go into radio, you know. Probably grew up with idols, uh, but now have become idols in many ways for others. Have your idols changed, and are there any that you look forward to working with? I don't think I wanted to, to, to be like Richard. Richard Pryor was like my idol when I was young, but I didn't want to be like Richard. I wanted to get the same response that he got from people. That's what I wanted. I, I idolized the way that I, I like, I, I like the way I like that response he would get. I wouldn't like see him and say, ah, oh, I want to be just like that. I would see him and say, Whoa, I want to make the people do the same thing he does. And that was my idol when I was coming up. Idolize is too strong. I don't, I probably only idolized Laurel and Hardy when I was a kid. I have little figures and I prayed to them, sacrificed my little brother once. <laughs> In the name of Laurel. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> what advice do you wish you'd been given when you started your career and would you have followed it? Hmm. Uh, what advice? Well, uh, I guess uh, I guess I I would have uh, wished that uh, I'd been uh, told where to uh, watch more American television because that's really where I learned it all. You know. What great questions do you think trading places offers the answer to? None the whatsoever. answer to? None whatsoever. You know we're doing this movie. This movie, and I think all movies should be this way. You shouldn't try to say anything. People come to see movies and to come, I, this is my personal belief. People come to see movies, people buy records, and people, anything that has anything to do with entertainment, people use them as an escape, I feel. And I don't try to say anything with my comedy, and I don't try to do anything when I do an album, and I don't try to say anything with, with a character when I do it in a, in a movie. I'm just trying to be entertaining. I don't think anybody should try to, I don't think you should take power. Like, a motion picture is real powerful, man. Like, movies like, what, what was that movie that, uh, with, with De Niro? Taxi driver. Yeah, people are saying that this guy went for a taxi driver and went out and was like, I want to be like, went and shot the president. Motion picture is real powerful. I don't think you should say anything with it. Just, just do it and be entertaining and be funny. That's why I feel. I don't want to say anything with him. I don't want to preach. Does your hooker character in Trading Places have a heart of gold when she <laughs> looks after Aykroyd's character? Or is she just keeping an eye open for future riches? Mm, no, 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 no. Then she would be a cold and calculating bitch. <laughs> And then we wouldn't like Ophelia. No, no, I think Hooker with a heart of gold. I think all hookers have a heart of gold. I hope so. I mean, you kind of almost have to, because it's such a cold thing that they do in a way. And I think that they probably all have a heart of gold underneath it. What advice do you wish you'd been given when you started your careers? And would you have followed it? Mm, none whatsoever. I don't think I'll ever give anybody any, any advice. Almost and all the advice I've been given was wrong. Almost. I don't, you shouldn't follow advice. 
Because the that's, that's our advice. Everybody, <laughs> take our advice. Don't follow advice. Because <laughs> everybody's life is different. Everybody's got different. If something works for John, I mean, it's going to work for me. So do your own thing. And you kids out there, do what you want. If your parents want you to do something else, do what you want. Because nine out of ten times, you'll be right. And if you become a bum, hey, we told you not to take advice, right? <laughs> your character has high expectations in trading places. Is there anything you grew up really wanting? Um, well, uh, A, to survive, uh, B, to be comfortable, and uh, C, uh, to um, reward my parents in some way. You know, just basically those, those three basic needs, you know. And I think I've, uh, I've achieved them, you know. I always felt that I wanted to, to you know, give back, because my, my parents uh, put up with an awful lot of what shall I say? Well, there's a definite word for it. I won't say it here, but they, they, they put up with hard times for me. And uh, so now, in, you know, in these later years here now, I'm able to uh, kind of kick back and, uh, you know, give back to them a little bit. And that's one thing that I always wanted to do and, uh, and have been able to do. How do you make the shift from comedy to dramatic fare and back again? And which would sunglasses you find the most? Man. Sunglasses do it. So he's no longer funny. Now he looks like a hip Negro. See? Wait, wait, now watch. <laughs> See? Yeah, it's that amazing. And with the bag on, Billy D. Which do you find the most rewarding or the most what? difficult? Comedy or, you know what's strange? When I went to do 48 Hours, that's the first film I ever did to people, I mean, you know that already. When I went to do that movie, I was like, I was like, oh, how am I gonna make this transition from comedy to, to serious acting? Because there were scenes where I had to be serious. And I went and I did it, and it was, it was really easy. And I was like, huh, there's nothing to this acting thing. It's, it's easy. And then I come to the set here, comedy is so much harder to do. The comics who did serious acting, Bing Crosby, I mean, were really good, really good. And most straight actors who attempt comedy fail miserably. It's easier to turn on that, I guess, that anger. You know, it's easier to look, I guess, because so many people have, like, there aren't many people that are happy about things. It's so easy to turn that anger on. It's so easy to, like, to, like, to look in and say, I'll rip your goddamn lungs out and look serious when you do it than, like, to look and comically say, I'll rip your lungs. It's, not, it's, much, it's much easier to be It's okay, they serious. can cut that. <laughs> you can cut that out. Do you, do you feel that either? <laughs> it's okay, they'll cut that out. <laughs>